welcome to our friends joining us from all over the world. We are, we are delighted to have you joining us today as we gather virtually to grow in faith, find inspiration and deepen our connection with God. In a world where physical distances can separate us, it is a tremendous blessing that technology allows us to come together as a community and transcend those barriers. So whether you are joining us from different corners of the world or from your own homes, we are united in spirit as we seek to honour and serve our Lord. During today's sermon, we will embark on a journey of spiritual reflection and renewal. Together we will explore the profound teachings of Christ, drawing strength and guidance from His words. So let us open our hearts to receive His grace and allow His love to transform us from then. In today's digital gathering, we are reminded of the power of connection. Although we may not physically see each other, our shared devotion brings us closer and creates a sacred space where we can uplift and support each other. And we encourage you to engage with fellow partners, share your thoughts and extend a helping hand to those who may be in need. Remember, we are not alone on this path of faith. Our community extends beyond these virtual walls and we are here to journey alongside one another. So may this sermon be a source of inspiration and encouragement to each of you. As we come together and worship, may the Holy Spirit guide our hearts and our minds, filling us with His peace and joy. Let us embrace this opportunity to deepen our understanding of God's boundless love and to live out our faith in ways that brings light to this dark world. May God bless you abundantly as we embark on the spiritual journey together in love and prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the God of all compassion. You've shown me kindness my whole life and your word teaches me that I should respond to others with the same kindness. My life experiences, however, have taught me to stay at arm's length from others. So I need your help with this. My gracious Father, my heart has grown a little cold for, the, for some other reason, and I've lost touch with your love and compassion for others. Please give me the compassion I need to reach those around me. Please touch my heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh that beats in unison with your compassionate heart for, the, for those around me. Please open my spiritual eyes and lead me in your love to others. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Colossians chapter 3 from verse 12. You are the people of God. And I want you to listen to that very carefully. Because that is true of you. You are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then, you must clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another whether any of you has complained against someone else. You must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. 
and to all these qualities add love which binds all things together in perfect unity. The peace that Christ gives us is to guide you in the decisions you make. For it is to this peace that God has called us together in one body. Be thankful. Now, dear friends, last time we were together, we spoke about compassion, the importance of compassion, as well as the obstacles in living a life of compassion. Today we want to draw our, t- our attention to how we can practically live out compassion in our daily lives. Because the, comp- the call to, comp- to compassion is not just a theoretical concept, but an invitation to engage in acts of love and service. Now the first thing is cultivating a compassionate heart. To live out compassion, we must start by cultivating a compassionate heart. And this begins with self-reflection and acknowledging the areas in our lives where compassion may be lacking. We need to seek God's guidance and ask Him to transform our hearts to help us see others as He sees them. And as we immerse ourselves in prayer and in God's Word, our hearts will be softened and we will be better equipped to respond with compassion. Now the Apostle Peter reminds us in 1 Peter 3 verse 8, Finally, all of you, be like-minded. Be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. So through prayer, we can ask God to shape our hearts and align our, our desires with His, enabling us to respond with true and genuine compassion. Additionally, Cultivating a compassionate heart requires us to practice empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. And we can actively seek to put ourselves in someone else's shoes, to listen attentively to their stories, and to seek understanding without judgment. And as we develop empathy, our compassion will deepen and we will be better equipped to respond to the needs of others. But the second thing is extending compassion to all. And I want you to think about that. Extending compassion to all. Because compassion knows no boundaries or limitations. It is not confined to a particular group or class of people. Jesus showed compassion to the outcasts, the poor, and even those he considered to be enemies. And as his followers, we are called to extend compassion to all, regardless of people's race, nationality, socioeconomic status, or religious beliefs. Because by doing so, we break down the barriers that divide us, and foster unity and reconciliation. Now the story of the Good Samaritan illustrates this principle beautifully. The Samaritan extended compassion to a stranger, someone from a different ethnic and religious background, demonstrating that compassion transcends social divides. In Matthew 5 verse 43-44, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbour and hate your enemy. 
but, and the truth always follows a but, eh? But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now this radical command challenges us to extend compassion even to those who may oppose or mistreat us. The third one is serving others with love. Compassion is not merely an abstract idea. It is meant to be a tangible expression through acts of service and love. Now Jesus taught us that the greatest among us is the one who serves. And we are called to follow this example by reaching out to those in need, by feeding the hungry, clothing the, the naked, caring for the sick. Each act of service becomes an opportunity to, to reveal God's love and compassion to this world. Now in Matthew 25, verse 35 to 40, Jesus describes this final judgment where he separates the righteous from the wicked. And he says to the, to the righteous, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And when, when asked, but when did they do all these things? Jesus responded, Truly I tell you, whether you did this for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did it for me. A wonderful emphasis on the connection between compassionate service and our relationship with Christ. Now we can also look at the example of Jesus washing his disciples' feet in John 13 verse 1 to 17. And by performing this humble act of service, Jesus demonstrated that compassion does not seek positions of power or prestige, but rather stoops down to serve others. And he calls us to do the same, to set aside our own agendas, to humbly serve those around us, to show them the love and compassion of Christ. Now the fourth one is advocating for justice and, and equality. Now compassion compels us to seek justice and advocate for the rights and dignity of all people. In a world plagued by injustice, poverty and oppression, cannot remain silent. We must use our voices to speak out against, against injustice, to confront systems that, that perpetuate suffering, and to work towards a more just and compassionate society. In doing so, we become agents of change, bring hope and transformation to those who need it most. Now the prophet Micah provides a, a powerful reminder of our responsibility to act justly and show compassion. Micah 6 verse 8 He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? That's the question. And then he replies, To act justly. To love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Now this verse encapsulates the holistic nature of compassion. It involves both individual acts of kindness and the pursuit of justice on a larger scale. Now advocating for justice may involve raising awareness about social issues supporting organizations that promote equality and human rights, or engaging in peaceful protests and 
advocacy efforts, we must be willing to stand up for those who are marginalized, oppressed or silenced, using our resources, our time and our influence to bring about positive change. Now, dear friends, as we conclude this sermon, let us reflect on the profound call to compassion that lies at the heart of our faith. And you heard right. Compassion lies at the heart of our faith. So uh, let's embrace compassion as a way of life, allowing it to shape our thoughts, words and actions. Let's go forth from this place armed with the power of compassion and, may the, and, and be the hands and feet of Jesus in a hurting world. By extending love, mercy and compassion to all, we participate in God's redemptive work, become vessels of His grace. May God bless us abundantly as we seek to live out the love and power of compassion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of the Sermon on Compassion, we humbly bow before you, grateful for the wisdom and insight you have imparted us today. Your word reminds us that you are a compassionate and loving God, overflowing with mercy and grace. And we thank you for the example of Jesus, who embodied compassion in every aspect of his life, teaching us to love and care for, for one another. Lord, we pray that the seeds of compassion sown in our hearts today will take root and bear fruit in our lives. Help us to truly understand the depth of your love and the significance of extending that love to others. May compassion become a defining characteristic of our Christian walk, shaping our thoughts, words and actions. Grant us the wisdom to recognize the need of those around us, the lonely, the hurting, the broken, and give us the courage to reach out with open hearts and helping hands. Help us to be channels of your compassion, bring comfort, healing, and hope to those who are in despair. Lord, in a world filled with division and strife, we pray for a spirit of unity and understanding to prevail. May compassion bind us together as brothers and sisters, breaking down barriers and bridging gaps. Teach us to see beyond differences and to value the inherent worth and dignity of every person regardless of their background, race, or status. We also lift up those who find it difficult to extend compassion, for those who have hardened their hearts and closed their hands to the needs of others. Soften their hearts, O Lord, and help them to experience the transformative power of your love. May they encounter your compassion in a profound way that brings about a change of heart and a desire to serve others. Finally, Heavenly Father, we ask for your continued guidance and strength as we strive to live lives of compassion. Fill us with your Holy Spirit empowering us to love selflessly and to show kindness without expecting anything in return.
to be a light in this world that reflects your love to all. In the precious name of Jesus, who showed us the ultimate act of compassion on the cross, we pray. Amen. Dear friends, have a blessed week and we'll see you next Sunday. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Every moment.